Well, none of it really made any sense again. This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome into Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from ESPN Central Texas. Thank you for making Locked On Big 12 your first listen every single day. Today, let's go through some shocking results, including a triple overtime game on Saturday, as well as in the middle segment, Iowa State and Kansas State have a legitimate basketball beef, and I love it. And who is right? Who is wrong? Let's analyze that. And then BYU, we need to have a serious real talk. This pertains to everybody, a learning lesson for the entire conference based on the signal the words that whatever horns down also uh if for those of you who wish congratulations for those of you who even asked before it was announced thank you i have taken a job in the savannah bananas organization and moved to savannah georgia where i am currently in my new studio um to work as the voice of the party animals and go on tour i will still do locked on big 12 but i'll be doing it across the country traveling with the savannah bananas and the party animals which is going to be Bananas. Get it? That's why. Get it? See? Look, this Saturday in college basketball and, and in general, can I can I can I go a little broad here to start? The Big 12 is the best conference in college basketball. We know that. I heard somebody say uh, Jimmy Dykes, I think, on Saturday, that the SEC is the most entertaining college conference in college basketball. And that's not true. I do think that, that we should make a point, though. There really isn't a clear number one team. And there have been a lot of teams that have moved to that revolving door, not just in this league, not just in the league. Kansas is four and three, four and three in Big 12 play, and not just here, but also across the country. Like, I don't know who is in the field. I don't know how you put 68 teams together right now in the NCAA tournament. And this weekend, in the Big 12 is great. Like, we, we are not getting a lot of consistency. Maybe the two teams that have been the two teams that have been the most consistent that you could probably give the consistent label to Houston, which not shocking. We, we kind of saw that coming. And then Texas tech, that one very surprising. Again, they dip into the Scott drew coaching tree. They get a one point win at Oklahoma this week and move themselves to five and one in conference play. Still number one in the big 12, their top 25. Oh, use top 25. If you're watching this show and, and the top 25 has not come out yet, what do you do? Like Kansas, they're in there. Obviously Houston's in there. You could make a case. Kansas state won't be, but you can make a case that they should be at 14 and six. They still, they still are a tournament team in my eyes, at least. So like Kansas, Iowa state, Texas tech, Oklahoma, Baylor, TCU, BYU, BYU, those are all going to be ranked teams today at the very least. And there are others that are going to make a case for that. Now, I would love to come out of the podcast today. And, and maybe the reason that I am so that I'm still so confused by this league in basketball is you could say, yeah, well, the home team's usually going to win, but that's not been the case. Like, Iowa State goes on the road and beats TCU. And then TCU goes on the road and beats Baylor. I don't understand. I don't understand if you watch this game wild, just wild. How if you're Baylor, you got you have to leave at halftime. You have multiple, not just one, multiple buzzer beaters to keep this game alive. And you're the team that loses. That's embarrassing. If you're a TCU fan, you saw the tweet that I tweeted out on Saturday. It said that I believe Big 12, bas Big 12 basketball referees are insufferable. They make the game unwatchable. Like That portion of Big 12 basketball is unwatchable. I now watch enough games, have flipped through enough games that everyone, and you know this, if you watch the show, you know that I say this all the time. It does not match the product on the floor. The officiating does not match the product on the floor issue across college basketball. Yes, more so the Big 12. I think so for the amount of games that at the very end of the game, it's taken out of the hands of the players. In this one, call it a flop. If you're a TCU fan, you call it a couple of flops. If you're a Baylor fan, you say that there were two charges on the last possession. I don't care. I think there are a couple of charges. But at those who watch this show also know that while I did... I did graduate from Baylor. I'm a Baylor guy. I am more critical of Baylor than I am any other team in the Big 12, and for good reason. Then there is the BYU conundrum. Like, is BYU an elite basketball? Yeah, too many threes. They can't shoot their way out of games. Then they score 40 points in the paint against Texas, and the Marriott Center once again is rocking. I'm going to get more into BYU later because they did the whole horns down thing and made the kids take the shirts off. That was nuts. West Virginia, Oklahoma State, both teams. Like, this is playing for the bottom of the league. Two old like old eight big 12 teams whatever do we ever find a moniker for those eight teams the original eight the irate eight the hateful eight i don't care 
they're the two worst teams in the Big 12, and it's not that close. I don't know if anybody else is really near them vying for that title, and they are teams that have been in the Big 12 for as long as anybody else. That, to me, is nuts. The success of the other four teams, while those two teams have just dwindled at best, Oklahoma State gets its first win. UCF and Cincinnati. How do you tell me? 14-6 and six Cincinnati. They're 3-4 and four in Big 12 play. If they stay around 500, there will be teams in this conference who get into March with a below 500 conference record because with 16 teams and 12 of them that could at least say they have a shot, a shot at making it to March Madness, there will be teams that are below 500 in league play and still make it in. Kansas, look at Kansas and Iowa State. Iowa State basketball is legit. They are they are the best defensive team, second best defensive team in the country via the eye test and just objective. You watch college basketball offensively. They've proven that's not an issue. Trey King exploding in this game against Kansas in Ames. Then there's the Houston deal. Houston, the best defensive team in America. Iowa state, number one in shot quality. Houston, number one. If you just, if you just watch it, Houston, number one, because they hold opponents to 50 points per game and are, they haven't allowed more than what? 60 in a game in 20 straight games. It's something nuts like that. Houston is a jugger 18 and two, the number one team in the big 12 with Kansas loss. I know Texas tech is number one based on win percentage, but if we talk about who's the best team in the big 12 right now, I think that that, that goes to Houston 72, 74, 52 against Kansas state for Kansas state. There are a lot of those fans that are talking about whether or not Jerome Tang is going to make the NCAA tournament in year number two, after going to the elite eight last season and Jerome Tang, once again, got himself in trouble with the officiating crew. I don't know if he got himself in trouble against Iowa, but has once again made headlines after calling out an official in a press conference by name and saying that he was chirping his players or, or telling his players that he was going to intentionally foul them out, calling an official out by name in the press conference. I think it's awesome. I, you know, I'm a big Jerome Tang fan. So all this to say, and then Texas tech going on the road to beat Oklahoma. Like, Five and one in Big 12 play, the surprise of the league. They're going to March Madness. All this to say, if you had to even build a top five, it's the reason, it is the reason that I don't do a Big 12 basketball power ranking. What would it be? One week, Baylor's going to be at two. The very next week, they'll be at nine. And it would be that level of fluctuation. It would be that level of fluctuation. One week, Kansas is at one. The next week, Kansas is at six. There are teams that are losing two out of three, three out of four, two in a row, three in a row. Teams that are losing at home. And I don't really know what to do with that. Aside from give you that this is the most unpredictable. I think this is the most unpredictable major conference in college basketball. You can go to the IMIAC or the... Um, um, Patriot League or any of those and Niagara will beat Manhattan. But when it comes to major conferences, you just don't know. Iowa State shows up in Fort Worth and wins. TCU shows up in Waco and wins. Houston, those guys are just winning. Kansas goes on the road to Morgantown. They lose. UCF hosting Kansas, them winning. I I don't know, man. I don't know. And then there are the teams like BYU that I lost faith in for a week. And now here they are right back again, 40 points in the paint. They don't have to live and die by the three. I I make the case again, double digit teams. There could be double digit teams in the big 12 in March madness because of the way this is playing out. Maybe the best case is that our net increases. Our team's net increases. If everybody hovers around 500, if 10 teams are within shot of 500 in league play, 10 teams can get in. That's not an exaggeration. That's not an exaggeration. Kansas, Iowa State, Houston, those are locks right now. Texas Tech, Oklahoma, those are locks right now. That's five. Baylor, TCU, those are locks. That's seven. BYU is eight. Texas, nine. Then Kansas State, 10. We still haven't talked about UCF or Cincinnati that have an outsider's chance. That's not crazy. It's just Big 12 basketball. Coming up, Iowa State and Kansas State are in a feud, a beef. Who's right? Who's wrong? What's going on? This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. eBay Motors keeps your ride or die 
alive. I'm a big EBA Motors guy because I'm very good at either breaking things in my car or doing things that make my car not go very well. And that's not good. You probably shouldn't do that. That's why eBay Motors is here. They help you fix that stuff. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, you name it. eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts, all the prices, Everything you could possibly want. eBay Motors is the place to go to keep your ride or die alive. eBayMotors.com. Eligible items only. Guaranteed fit is also in there, which means that it is guaranteed to fit whatever you get. Uh, That is only available to U.S. customers. eBay Motors. eBay.com. Motors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply at eBayMotors.com. Kansas State and Iowa State are in a massive beef. Who is right? Who is wrong here? So to unpack a little bit, Jerome Tang is livid at the end of a game in the midweek between Kansas State and Iowa State. He is livid at the officiating crew, gets technical later on in the game. Uh, This is a game in Ames, but livid apparently, according to multiple sources on the Iowa State side, he thought it wasn't somebody yelling a racial slur originally. And that's even part of this is that Kansas State fans, as soon as Jerome was mad before they had any information, were claiming that that Iowa State fans were racist and screaming racial slurs. And then there was this whole deal about how Iowa State fans were throwing things at the bench. Both of those things became untrue. And then Jerome Tang, after the game, shaking TJ Otzelberger's hand, explained something to him very vividly. Is almost pointing like somebody's holding a phone and he's talking about it. Then the rumor becomes, okay, it wasn't a racial slur. It wasn't somebody throwing something. It was Jerome Tang being upset that apparently Iowa State was trying to film the huddle. They had a manager that was trying to film the huddle or a manager that was trying to spy or somebody who was sleeping the floor was trying to get in the huddle of Kansas State and film it or listen in. And Jerome Tang didn't like that. One of his staffers, according to sources, cussed out the kid. And Jerome comes to the podium and says, nothing happened. We'll keep it between the coaches. And TJ Otzelberger, obviously, with that statement from Jerome Tang, now things can run. He was never accusatory. He never said publicly, somebody was filming my bench, somebody had a racial set of racial slurs, somebody threw something. Jerome never made a legitimate accusation against Iowa State. But by virtue of being unclear, by virtue of him saying something happened, nothing happened, whatever, who cares? We'll keep it between the coaches. Then rumors start to fly. The situation becomes bigger than it needs to be. And Iowa State gets a very tough look. An example of this is that Kansas State fans are tweeting out, Iowa State fans are racist. That was a whole deal that happened this week. And that's because Jerome Tang never gave any clarity. Now, I'm a big Jerome Tang guy. I've told you, he's the first person I hugged after Baylor's 2022 Big 12 Basketball Championship victory on the court. He is a dude. I love the guy. But I do think he's in the wrong in this situation. I understand. We've all been in in scenarios where we don't have enough information, but in the moment, we're mad. In the middle of a basketball game, I get it. In the moment, he's upset. If one of your staffers comes to you, the head coach, and says, hey, their managers are filming us, or hey, X, Y, this person is doing X, this person is doing X, and it's keeping us from winning this basketball game or putting us at a disadvantage. You are going to be upset before you ask questions, and you're going to tell T.J. Otzelberger to figure it out. You're going to tell them to investigate it. And then Jerome said that he's a big fan of T.J. and a fan of what he does and likes his program. And I think Otzelberger, Jamie Pollard, all of Iowa State did the right thing. I think they nailed this. While Kansas State, who has had issues at the very top university president to athletic director to Jerome Tang himself in the last week doing things the Big 12 might find him for, a la calling out a ref at the Houston game, which I think Jerome is right. I think Jerome's right in a lot of this. Where he's not right is being so vague that it created nasty rumors about Iowa State that were not true. And TJ Otzelberger instead comes out and lays it down. He says, we didn't do this. We didn't do anything. This stir, these rumors, all of these allegations, the bad look that our program is getting. He said it is a it basically said it's a disgrace to the fans. It's a disgrace to the players, to the coaches. And he's right. Jerome Tank could have done two things that would have been honestly better than leaving it so vague. By the way, according to The Athletic, when Jerome was questioned on this after T.J. Otzelberger's comments, Jerome said, I, I stick with what I stood by in the press conference, which was basically saying uh, nothing happened. This is between the coaches. What Jerome could have done is said, here's what happened. 
Here's what I was told. I was told that there was a, a manager who was filming our bench. We're looking into it. Then TJ Otzelberger comes out and says that it wasn't a manager looking at your bench. And then Jerome Tang comes out and says, we cleared it up. We're on good terms. That's the best possible scenario here is just being normal. <laughs> like that, that honestly creates less of a stink than leaving it so vague. Or what Jerome Tang could have done is just leave it vague. Otzelberger says, we looked into it. This is not us. These allegations are untrue. And then Jerome Tang makes a statement and says, I'm sorry. Like Jerome Tang is a guy who believes in accountability and his actions in the post game caused a lot of flack that was seemingly unnecessary for Iowa state. Jerome Tang to me is the kind of character guy that says, you know what? There was a, a misconception. I got it wrong. We're on great terms. That's it. That's all you have to do. But instead what's been created is a massive rift between Iowa state and Kansas state fans. Which, by the way, isn't that bad? I don't know if I don't know if I can pick a side here exactly. If I don't know if I can say, "Hey, I'm Team Jerome Tang. He didn't do anything wrong." I feel like Jerome could have handled it differently. Could have handled it better. Or that I'm Team TJ Otzelberger. It seems like Otzelberger did what he needed to do. Came out and cleared his name, cleared his program, and said these rumors aren't true. I am Team Rivalry. This has ignited Farmageddon into a different animal. When we talk about some of the classic basketball rivalries across the country, and many people start with the Duke and Carolina, or they go to the Big East and talk about some of those games. What if we're able to create and craft those in the Big 12 in basketball with games that are now more high profile since Kansas State and Iowa State are both very good at basketball with a couple of head coaches who weren't that well known when they were brought in? It's not like these two teams hired coaches that were big names across the sport to, to rebut it. This wasn't a Sean Miller comes in to coach one of these. No, these are guys who are picking up by the bootstraps and just go shock the world and win Iowa state and Kansas state doing kind of the same thing and winning ahead of schedule. And now they both hate each other. I love that the fans hate each other. Can I just say to the video, of the Iowa state fans that are trying to tee up Jerome Tang and there's the, this grandpa old man and the Jim Carrey looking guy. And then all, all there were some people who were like, this is so embarrassing for your fans. No, no, that's the word. The word is fans. They're fanatical. We all go to college basketball games and make fools of ourselves. Now, do I do that? Do I do the pizza? Sometimes, but I, I, I get why you, it's a weird look for an old guy to be teeing up the head coach, but brother, that's what we do at college basketball games. We don't just sit down quietly. Like Kansas state fans, you of all people get this, you get this Kansas state has maybe the, they have a top five most passionate fan base in the new big 12, the 16 new big 12 teams. It's top five. It's in the, it's the, it's an elite fan base comparatively in the big 12. You get it. Your old people yell too. And if they don't, you want them to. I think we'd all take a step back. Actually, don't. Don't. Take a step forward. I love that this rivalry has become even more intense because of what happened between Jerome Tang and TJ Otzelberger. Hell yeah. Coming up, BYU. Dude, we got to have a come to Jesus here. No pun intended. This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you, kind folks, by FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one place to go when you want to win money. Oh, you feel like you haven't won money in a while? Good. FanDuel's here to fix that. And with the NFL playoffs going on, how about those games yesterday? Crazy. FanDuel's doing even more. I love, I love Super Bowl Sunday, which is almost here, by the way, because of, because of not just the game and the food, but the ability to like make same game parlays and sit on the couch with my friends and have Ops. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end your season with a W or two or three. So right now, not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl, but FanDuel also has bets for which player will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored. Super Bowl 58 is coming up $200. $200 if you join today in bonus bets if you bet $5 or more. And it wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel.com slash locked on for $200 in bonus bets. If your $5 money line bet or your $5 bet in general hits, make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the N. F L All right, BYU, we got to talk. I am pro BYU. That is known. I have been on BYU sports nation game day. I love Provo, Utah. I will never, I, I try my best to not slander any big 12 team, but there's a special place in my heart for BYU because of its commitment to faith. Can I, can I say that up front? I love that BYU. I went to Baylor 
I've been around TCU. I've seen these schools that have Christian affiliations or religious affiliations that they fall short in one category or another. They can't mix being an elite elite athletic school with also valuing faith. BYU does both. They can be an elite athletic school and have a great commitment to faith. That's a tough thing to do. And I think BYU does it better than anybody in the country. And I have an appreciation for the way that they do that. However, what happened, what more Mark, Mark Pope said on Saturday is so anti college sports and so unreasonable, even to me in the realm of BYU's commitment to, to its brand. This is a miss. There is a section of students who have obviously gotten to the game very early to sit on the front row, H O R so on horns down written across their shirt. And they were asked, Mark Pope said this in the post game press conference, or he could have just left it and said nothing. He said that the BYU administration or somebody BYU asked those students to take their shirts off because that's not them. That's not us. He said, that's, that's not BYU. It's not who we are. My brother in Christ horns down is not a slur horns down is the, the least do not. I, I can't tell if this is, if this allows Texas is this just them creeping into our heads? Has Texas made such a big deal about horns down that now we feel the need that BYU feels the need that it's so terrible. This is something. It, can I just be, can I be honest with you? This is unserious in the realm of college sports. This looks very unserious. This is not an elementary school. If someone shows up to the arena wearing a beat Cincinnati pin on their lapel, that's fine. You can't ask them to take that off. And that is the exact same thing as horns down. Horns down stands for beat Texas. It's the same. It's not a, it's not a, a, a like you're not going to make their players cry. This is what normal college fans do. Welcome to the power five. We're not babysitting kids in the student section. That's number one. We're not babysitting kids in the student section. Two, the culture is already so well instilled that your student section, I've seen it myself in football, I've seen it at soccer, is the nicest student section in the world while still, while still building an elite atmosphere. And now if I'm a BYU student and I know that I, in essence, can't wear a beat Baylor pin to a game, why am I going to show up? What BYU just told its students that have created such a great atmosphere for its basketball program is that the line for having fun is really short. And I, I asked on Twitter, I put out, I said, look, BYU fans, I don't, I want to make, I want to research this. I don't want to come out firing against BYU, which again, I really appreciate. And, and I, I, like I said, I don't, I don't get paid to blow hot air up every skirt of every team. At some point, I have to be critical of everybody. And I was so shocked by how many BYU fans were also critical of this move. It is, it is a, it's Bush League in the context of the Power Five, in the context of being a big time legitimate power program. Joe Wheat says, absolutely not. He doesn't support this. We all wanted the shirts to stay. BYU is super sensitive about how opposing teams are treated. Absolutely not, says Nick Lee. It was soft. Our loyalty, our loyalty is the new Big 12, not the old, Ryan Thomas says. All of these. All, majority, definitely not in favor of taking off the shirts. BYU administration has always been kill them with kindness. This was too soft. This was too soft. Trying to be classy. Trying to be classy. Let the students have fun. This, it's just, you, you want, I know, you want to commit, you want to commit to kindness, but beat Baylor, beat Tech, beat TCU, horns down, are all the same statement. And if you're being that nitpicky, this isn't, horns down is not derogatory. This is in the name of fun. This is in the name of fun in a, in a college sports event. This was soft. So soft that it's embarrassing. I just, it for some I, I I get it right. I went to a religious school. I love the religious affiliation. That commitment is impressive. But this this is the hill you wanted to die on. Horns down shirts. Horns down shirts. Is the hill that BYU? That's what you want your students to take those off because it's too much. Seriously.
Not seriously. It's unserious. It's unserious. That you, at some point, you are committed to faith. What all out, 100%. You're also a big time athletic program. You've got to act like it. You can do both. Horns down is not something that has to be out of the equation. And the message to everybody else is don't do that. That's so, please, nobody else in the conference do that. This to Texas, especially. I don't care how much they cry about the whole horns down thing. This has been and always will be. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Come back tomorrow. Let's, uh, I think Robbie Triano is going to join at some point. Locked on. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Dos grande.